Welcome to the Whole Enchilada, a community of high achievers that fight the status quo, rebel against mediocrity, and make life happen. Let's go. Hey, Enchilada Nation, really excited to have you here with us today with uh, not only an incredible human being, but one of my close friends, Louis Hamner. Louis, thanks for joining us today. Yeah, you bet, Marcus. Awesome. So we're going to jump into our conversation and we're going to focus uh, over the next couple episodes around leadership. It's been something that's been on my mind recently uh, in two respects. One is um, from the perspective of, of the entrepreneur is we're all leading people and that all starts with self-leadership. And one of the things I've always been impressed with Louis is his ability to lead and attract people. And con there's a trail of people behind you, Louie, that every time I connect with them and they know I'm associated with you uh, as partners in some of our ventures is they say something along the lines of, man, Louis changed my life or Louis was there for me through this, which is just, you know, once or twice, you're like, oh, he's made an impact on people. But when you're seeing that over and over and over again with people, it's, it's pretty impressive. Yeah, uh, so, so I'm going to give you a chance to quickly introduce yourself. Tell us anything you want to know, because I know you have an incredible family and some fun hobbies. Uh, but for those of you that don't know Louis, uh, he's one of, uh, in my opinion, one of the top entrepreneurs here in Utah, has owned and operated several different uh, companies, particularly in the title space uh, here in Utah. And like I said, continues to impact people around him. Uh, Louis, what else should we know about you before we jump into this conversation? Um, just that, you know, I, I grew up in Indiana and in a very humble, like very poor family. And so I guess why I'm saying this is because sometimes when you see somebody after they've done their thing or then you're like well that they're that's because they started out better than me or something you know i grew up you like i had a there were three bedrooms 13 kids one bathroom and an outhouse and i used an outhouse up until i was seven years old like what? so i grew up yeah I, I don't even know if you know i don't know i did no, uh, you yeah. and I have talked for hours and i <laughs> did not know yeah. this so that's what I'm saying. so I so I'm just saying I grew up you know not pretty much being on welfare my whole life like re receiving assistance to some level as a family so uh, actually you saying that you know and me being experiencing what I've experienced in my life sometimes it's un it's like I, unbelievable because of where I started does that make sense so I just yeah. want people to know that I'm not yeah I didn't start with I don't know whatever advantages or something you know, you know what i mean yeah what well, I, I love that you bring this up because i think it's a great place to start our conversation because uh the majority of our our network here is we're all on a journey together right and it doesn't really matter where you're at in the journey it's that you've chosen to go on this journey of growth self-leadership and, and living a balanced life um and i think that's right a lot of times people see us where we're at and think we've always been there right yeah. and that's that's not always the case and i honestly i don't know what's more surprising uh, the idea of of um, using an outhouse up until you're seven, or that there were 13 kids <laughs> yeah. in your house. That's that's incredible. So let let's take let's take a trip down memory lane since we're already there. Um, I, I'm curious to know, like, what were there points in your your youth where you felt the, that leadership kind of bubbling up, or I want to have an impact on people, or I want to oh, change gosh. my circumstance? Like, tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, I'm so like I, I seriously when you just said that you know take a trip down memory lane it got me emotional because uh, as a kid I remember uh, my dad would be talking to these men who had on these nice clothes or a suit that looked nice and I didn't understand what they were talking about as a kid but I specifically remember thinking I hope they're telling my dad how to be successful and make money because we need money. Mm. And then sometimes, you know, I would even say, would you, what did you talk about with, you know, whoever? And he's like, oh, we talked about politics or this or that. And in my mind, I'm like, who cares about politics? Yeah. Let's make money. Like, what yeah. are we doing? Like, we're broke. Like, did, did, did we, what was the, what's the secret, you know? Uh, so just always, you know, I always thought that, like, that and as a kid i remember thinking if i ever make it i'm going to teach anybody who wants to learn how to do it like i, I want to teach people because i don't want you know i i, I don't want I, I don't want people to have to experience that if they don't want to 
Does that make sense? Like if they're willing to make a change or if they're willing to do this or that, like I just, I don't want them to do that if they're, if they're willing to work for it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And I, and actually I think that's one of the things that, that has uh, bound you and I together over the last couple of years as we've gotten closer is from a, from a making it standpoint and in, in succeeding within our profession, mm-hmm. like not to say that, that we were the highest in our game, because there's obviously incredibly successful people out there, but we both have had some element of success at, in our profession, but something, some element of a fire has burned within us that has caused us to continue doing that through people, but focusing a higher, pri- a higher portion of our time and energy into this leadership role. Uh, which frankly sometimes is less lucrative than just really crushing your <laughs> crushing it as the uh, as the uh, escrow officer or a real estate agent or whatever. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, yeah. So let's, let's stay let's stay back in in uh, your history here for a second. Who was the first leader that really stuck out to you? Of like, hey, this this person's having an impact on me, and it's changing my my trajectory. Uh, my scoutmaster, he, uh, he, um, man, you know, he's asked me this question. I'm just thinking back, like, uh, I, because he would say to me, there's something different about you. He would say, he would say, you're, you're not 14, you know, you're not 12. He's like, you, you're, you're like 20, you know, like he goes, you're going to make it whatever and and he would say that like you, there's something special about you because you you own you know as a as a kid at 13 i got made the senior patrol leader uh, there were kids that were older than me yeah. and he's like do you know why you're the senior patrol leader i'm like why he's like because you care that everybody makes it like you you were like pushing everybody along he's like even though these kids are older than you they don't care as much as you do. You care that everybody makes it. And I'm like, he's like, and that is what an older person would do, not a kid your age. And yeah. I'm like, uh, okay, I'm the senior patrol leader, even though I'm 13, you know. Like, yeah, that's, yeah, that's awesome. It's funny that uh, you mentioned scouts. It, it was, you know, I was the the problem child for a lot of my scout masters growing up, you know. <laughs> Uh, yeah. I, it's funny later in life I was a scoutmaster for eight years myself oh. so I, I got paid back in problem kids but uh, I do remember after about two years of being a scoutmaster growing my businesses at the same time I actually reached back out to some of my old scoutmasters it's said two things one I'm so sorry <laughs> and number two thank you like the the just the ability to learn leadership yeah. from those guys the influence they had on me at a younger age so I, I love that you bring up uh, that care piece of leadership, right? There's there's positional leadership that I think a lot of people think are is leadership, and it's that's from the five levels of leadership from John Maxwell of just having the the name leader or president or CEO behind your name it, on paper makes you a leader, but it doesn't in, inherently create care for the people that you lead. And I love that you led from, from that. Um, do you still see that driving your leadership style as lead from a place of care? Oh yeah. That, that is like, um, that is like why that's, that's just what drives me. Like, uh, even, you know, my wife Viv will say, you know, why are you, you know, for example, you know, I'm kind of doing more of this breath work and she's like, why are you so driven to do it? I'm like, because I can see that people need it. And it's changed me. And I'm like, they have to have it. If it changed me, I have, to, I have to make it available. Like what has changed me and what has impacted me? I, always feel, I just feel the sense of obligation is that I have to make it available to the people who want it that I'm around. And so uh, as a kid, I remember, so I used to catch fireflies as a kid to earn money because we had no money. And, uh, you know, it was a penny and one. And, and when I first started doing it, it was like, I'd make 50 cents a night. And my siblings were like, that is nothing. What do you, like, who cares? Right. Um, but then when I started, I got better at better at, it and I was making $10, you got to figure this is 1982 and, and, and minimum wage was like two thirty five. I'm making $10 in an hour and 45 minutes at the age of 13. Yeah. Like, crazy it's like crazy it's like a real estate agent crazy money you're like you're whatever you know you're you're yeah. doing this and uh and then but i remember like my siblings that were close to me they didn't want to do it because it was work 
And it just blew my mind of like, why won't you do this? This will do it. And, and they just didn't have that same passion to do it. And, and so uh, that was always hard for me, realizing that you wanted something for somebody so bad. But it's like, no, I don't want to do that. I'll find yeah. out my own way, which is not, no, no judgment. Yeah. They, they can find their own way. But it just realized that some people aren't going to want your way, right? And, you know, the, the definition of leader means pathfinder. That, that, that is what it means, pathfinder. And so it means that um, it's not that you're in charge of them. It's that you found a path and the way you walk that path and people say, hey, you're my leader. I like that path. I want to be on the west side. Of, I don't, you know, you can be, have summited the mountain, but some people don't want to be at that side of the mountain. I want to be on this side. And so even though two leaders on the same mountain, same summit, but depending on the side, so one becomes, you're my leader because you're on the west side and east side, you know? And, yeah. and so like, so anyway, I realized that as a kid, I didn't really understand that. I just thought if, if it works and it's successful and it makes money or whatever it is, you'll want to do it. And not everybody wanted to do it. And, and so, yeah, so as a kid, I, just, I realized that um, I just felt obligated because like I said, I would see these guys, these men talk to my dad. I thought they have, they know we're dirt poor. They know our house looks like this horrible. Like I'm embarrassed. Like people would come to my house. It was so bad. I would literally hide. Like I did not want to be seen <laughs> with the person from my church in my house with me. Like, I don't want to be identified with this. Yeah. It was so embarrassed. Like it was like a hoarder's house. It was yeah. awful. I remember thinking my what my brother's fiance, my first brother to get married was, you know, 16, 17 years older than me. I thought his fiance is gonna gonna leave him once he see once she sees how <laughs> awful this house is and, and the conditions we live in. There's I, I would run away. I would be like scared to death, you know. That's funny. So it's just so funny. It's, anyway. I, I love that imagery of of leadership as a pathfinder. Um and it, and it really it, it does paint a beautiful picture of leadership. Um, one of the things that I'm curious, uh, if you've struggled with this as well, because I think, um, caring and loving on people, and this was a big aha for me in my, my leadership journey was ultimately learning that business is about people, not about money. Mm -hmm. Um, and the money comes, the better you serve people. Yeah. Um, and, and I think that served me well, a lot in caring and having people feel genuine care for them. And it's also, it's a double-edged sword because there's been a lot of times where I've, I've cared deeply for someone and wanted something for them, but then they weren't willing to do the work that you were talking about to better their own situation. A leader finds a path, um, but it doesn't necessarily force someone down a path. That's right. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So is that, tell, I'm curious if that's, if that's been a double-edged sword for you as well in, in carrying people into in inspiring them to move or caring for people that's actually stilled your own movement because you've been overly committed to that relationship. Yeah, so two things on that. One, um, I remember when I would experience that, um, just what I said you know, a minute ago, like, why aren't they willing to do the work, okay? So what I've noticed is that the, who I am today to who I was, say, you know, 10 years ago, I have less people that are willing to do the work in my life today. So the, the ratio is getting smaller of, not, of the unwilling. And it's getting smaller, I think, for, for two reasons. One, uh, I can communicate better what the path is, what it looks like. What, what the reward is, what the cost is. And so people can really identify that, yeah, you are my leader because that is, and, and what I'm experiencing. And they're like, yes, this is for sure the path. That's one, being able to communicate it, uh, the, the risk and reward, risk versus reward, right? Like the pain and the pleasure or whatever. Yep. And then secondly is really understanding uh, uh, back in 2014, uh, I took a deep dive into understanding empathy and, and studying what Brene, work of Brene Brown. 
And what I realized is I had no idea what empathy is. And what I understand even today that 98% of the population has no idea. They, they really don't know it. And the more that I'm able to sit and to create a safe space and to hold space for someone to experience their fear about the path and say, wow, that's awful. I get it. Then more people want to be on the path because there's because they know that I know in detail what their fear is. And so then they say, if you know me so well, then and then I know that this is my path because uh, you can describe the madness and the pain of that past so well. And I feel so understood by you. I'm willing to stay on the path. Yeah. Does that make sense? T totally makes sense. I, I, and I, it doesn't come to, as a surprise to me at all that you've been a student of, of Brene Brown. I read one of her books uh, a few years ago and it, it exposed a major, major <sighs> hole in my own leadership, oh. which is vulnerability. Um, and it was yeah. the first time I'd ever heard anyone say a key characteristic of a great leader is vulnerability. When up to that point, uh, I don't know if it was my upbringing or what it was, but I, I felt like as a leader, I can't expose my own weaknesses. Those, I've got to keep those hidden. I've got to keep those emotions inside. And yeah. the idea behind it that she was expressing is, no, if you're not vulnerable with your people, you're not going to connect with them on a deep enough level to create yeah. them, have them move. That's right. So I think to me, you know, I never thought of this, but just our conversation is inspiring this thought of that, you know, leader means pathfinder, right? Mm -hmm. I think it also speaks to that a true leader also can recognize uh, the, what, how do you want to say it? The, 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 the person on the journey, the person that like, they can recognize the person that should be on this path. Mm-hmm. Like I can say, no, this, I know this is what you really want. And I bet you're very fearful about this. And I bet you're really fearful about this. Like, I know that you should be on this path. Like, does that make sense? Like, it's not only, like I know yeah, the path that well, that I can say, no, you, sh you need to be. And I know you want to be. And they're like, yes, I do. Yeah. I'm scared as hell to be on it. I'm like, I know it's scary, you know? Yeah. No, I, I, I love I that. That's the next level, like being able yeah. to see it. Yeah, I, I actually, I think that's really beautifully said because the the idea of of a leader being a pathfinder finding the path is really only part of the equation it's then finding the people that should be on that path because that path isn't for everyone right you think about the peak of a mountain there might be eight ten twelve different paths that all lead there and some of them are slow slow easier lots of switchbacks but longer some of them are steep and straight but whatever it is is you got to make sure am i finding the people i found the path am i finding the people that match the path and then how am I inspiring them to keep moving? Yeah, yeah. So uh, I recently had this experience where I had a, uh, a friend who owns a business that was looking for someone to partner up with. Uh, and, you know, anyway. And so I said, hey, I don't know of anybody, but I know somebody who might know somebody because they've done that. I go, the person you need, I have this person that I work with every day that could do that job. But I, so I bet she knows somebody in her world, in her past world, that could fill that position for you, right? Mm -hmm. And this was a really good, like, great opportunity. This just happened last week. And so, uh, anyway, once I passed that her on, I connected these two people. I said, hey, will you help uh, Chelsea out and figure this out with her? And da, 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 da. And she's like, yeah. Uh, the next day, I thought, oh, my gosh, why did I refer that person? They're going to take that job. Mm -hmm. I'm going to lose. And for... Like that thought came to me and then for about an hour, I was just kind of thinking through that. And then I finally just settled and I just thought, you know what, if that's what she really wants to do, I should have ne I, I should have done it regardless at my detriment. If that's what this person really wants to live in their life and that's really the opportunity they really want. I thought I, I, I should have done that either way. So I thought, okay. And then I didn't hear anything back for a week. And I thought, oh, shoot. <laughs> like, and I'm thinking, Sue's going to kill me. Or, you know, Jeff's <laughs> going to kill me. They're, like, they're going to destroy me when they find out. I'm like, oh, well. Yeah. Anyway, so this person comes back to me and says, just so you know, I met with her and talked about it. And it was an awesome offer. And she goes, but this, that's not my path. And my heart, I was just like, oh, my gosh. 
it just made me feel so good because I thought, oh my gosh, like she then now now I'm like I got I just got chosen again. You know, it's just like this. I just uh, and I thought anyway. So it was just to me the true leader would be even be willing to give up. And I realized that last week. I thought I would be even willing to say, hey, there is this opportunity. And I know you've talked about this for years. You should really go do this if you want, like as opposed to hiding it. Does that make sense? Like mm -hmm. I, I should have done that. And that just exposed something in me that I've never really experienced where I was the catalyst to them finding the other job or, you know, yeah. Yeah. anyway. No, I, I, I think that's a, a really incredible example because I see this and this has happened to me within my own entrepreneur journey is we, we become someone's leader. We build them up within our organization and at some point that person chooses uh, an opportunity outside of the organization because they feel like they, they see a better version of themselves through that other opportunity That's right. than what they're currently getting inside our world. But That's the funny right. thing is, is and, I, and I did the same thing when I didn't understand leadership at a higher level and it's still tempting to do it when it happens, is we want to blame that person. I'm so mad at that person. They have no loyalty. I can't believe they would do this That's to right. me. That's right. When a lot of times we need to look internally and say, was, was part of their reason their left is because I wasn't growing fast enough of a leader. I led them to here, but I was the lead, was I the leader to lead them to the next level, their next level. That's right. That 100, 100%. And that was a limiting belief I had for a while that if I played full out, then all of that meant is that my people would leave me faster. Right. And I remember, I remember being at UPW at Tony Robbins and he's like, write down your limiting beliefs. And I wrote that down when I play full out and then, and then he's like, now write down the opposite of that. Or he said, you know, restate that, but in the, yeah. And I, then I put my people will leave when I play full out, they will never want to leave me because of how much they're growing. Mm -hmm. Like, and I remember being emotional about it. Just like that. I don't have to believe in that fear because I want to play full out because I want to give them all I got. Because then I felt like I'm not living up to my true identity of wanting to care for them and to give them everything that I learned and grew, you know, everything I've understood. And I'm like, th then it just freed me of that dilemma of where I has, you know, a conflict in my values. It freed me of that. And then I realized that is what has happened. Because I have played so full out, they're more loyal and growing. And, gro and, and, and what that person came back to me and said, they said, this would have been nice. I, I probably would make I know I would make more money in the end, but I would never become the person I want to become because, and that money, that job is all about money and growing a business and getting more money, but it wouldn't be about me growing. And that's not what I need right now. And there's been a lot of surveys and, and studies out that show that um, for a lot of people, particularly the Gen X and Gen Y coming into the uh, and Gen Z coming into the workforce, it's it's money is important, but it's not the most important. That's right. It's about who they're becoming, how they're growing, what lifestyle are they able to maintain, and a lot of times that off offsets that immediate uh, cash flow opportunity for somebody. That's so they, right. Here's here's the here's the question that that I think we need to follow up with this is for and this was a huge lesson for me earlier on in my in my career was generally speaking the skill set it takes to be great at your occupation is not the same skill set it takes to be a great leader and if you're if you're going to go down the path of leadership to lead other people then you have an obligation to grow your leadership skill set mm. constantly so, Lou, what do you do on a regular basis to make sure your leadership is growing in proportion to the people within your organization? Um, I'm, I'm just really trying to give, you know, one is that um, I'm constantly just feeding my mind of, you know, reading just, and, and even books I've read before because I didn't get it you know, I'm at a different level and I read a book five years ago. I'm going to understand at a whole different level today. Yeah. Um, so to me, that of, of just inputting information, just and then so I can uh, see how that information might play out in my life. Right. Um, and really connecting more with myself, because what I've recognized is that my, uh, in my, 
you know, my intuition or what my gut, like what I, I've kind of went back and looked at the things I felt like my gut impression and what I should do. And that is rarely wrong when I'm, when I'm in my best self, you know, like when mm -hmm. I'm doing that, there's a quote that said, uh, Zig Ziglar said, uh, he, well, he said, you always move towards the strongest impressions of your mind. That, that, that's what, that's, that's what, where you're always moving towards. What, what impresses you the most, you know? And so I realized, like, I, I always think like, what, where, where do I feel I should be learning? Not, not, not even if it's driven by anything, what I'm experiencing, what do I feel I should learn? Um, so to me, I, like, and I've been more connecting to myself, kind of doing this, you know, breathwork practice I kind of talked about, mm -hmm. talked about before, but the, it's like the more that I do that, I'm, I'm connecting more with myself, with who I am at my core. And then I, and then I can be more clear, like, what do I really need? At not like, what do I need to be filled? Because whatever it is that fills me, whatever area I need to grow in, uh, that's what's going to, you know, that's what's going to be best for the people around me, right? Like, yeah, I, th I think that's, I think that's really true. Like how, how effective is a pathfinder that doesn't know their own path? Yeah, that, that, so that's it. So I'm constantly trying to dial in. What is my path? What do I need to be learning? Uh, there's a quote that um, I learned from, I was, I was with Matt, your brother at the Keller Williams training. And, and he said, I um, can't remember the guy's name off the top of my head, but the quote was, that which is most personal is most universal. Hmm. So from that, from a couple of years ago, what I, what, what I, how I've changed is I've kept thinking, what is most personal to me that I need to learn and grow? Where am I experiencing pain that if I could elevate my understanding or my perspective at least that that pain would be marginalized because pain is there to teach us something and so I kind of look at my pain and then think what would I what would I need to have known or understood or my perspective have been for that pain to be marginalized then then um then I kind of feel into like then that's what I needed to learn like empathy that's I realized like I I don't understand what people are really going through they bring me these things and they say these things but it just doesn't make sense to me. I'm like, I'm, I feel like my dad, shut up. I'm going to give you something to cry about if you don't stop crying, you know, like that's, and I'm realized like, so I don't understand it. So that's what led me going into empathy. It's like, I really, my pain is, I don't even know what their pain is. When they talk about it, it doesn't make sense to me. I'm like, just quit complaining about it and move forward. Right. So that's what led me to that. So it's like more, you have this inner knowing. I think we know more than what we think we know. And, you know, Socrates says learning is just remembering. And so I think when we can connect to our own self, then we remember our path. And then when knowing the path, and then we can kind of see that which we can, you know, where we need to uh, learn more or focus a little bit more on, you know. Yeah. No, I think that's very well said. Um, and and I've, I've got a page of notes here of little ahas you've given me as we've, we've had this conversation today. And I think that is such a huge piece uh, of leadership is um, constantly asking the question of, of what is it that I need to be learning uh, to better serve my people. And one of the things that I do on a regular basis to help me know what I should be learning to keep that path clear is, is I ask myself and I have a little sticky note on my computer that says who needs my A game and then also understanding like, okay, the people that I'm, I'm leading, what's on their mind today? Like, what problems are they facing? What are they trying to figure out? And if, if I can create, if I can create a, a quicker path to their biggest problem right now to an answer to that problem, then, then I'm showing up as the leader they need in this moment. But if I'm, if I'm not familiar with the, the problems that they're facing or what they're thinking about and, and what's keeping them up at night right now, then in no way can I help clear a path to the, to the solution for them. Uh, yeah. I love that. That's, that's really good. What, Yeah. Yeah, what's on, what's top, you know, what are they worried about today? Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. awesome. Well, this has been a super fun conversation. We're going to, we're going to wrap it up. Uh, a couple of things that really stuck out to me and I'd love to hear your, your final takeaways is I, I really love that, that your leadership uh, comes from a place of care uh, primarily uh, because ultimately that what binds people together. Nobody can ever be bound to somebody if they don't feel like they care for them. Right. 
we talk about uh, one of the greatest loves on, on the planet is uh, a mother's love for her child and the child's love for the mother. And that's because instantly from day one, right out the, right out the womb, there's an instant amount of care for that person yeah, and that yeah. shows up in leadership. And I, I love that aha. We kind of shared back and forth of the idea of a leader is a pathfinder. And now it becomes a, 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 a process of, am I matching the right people to the right path? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what, what, what are the last uh, takeaways or thoughts you'd like to leave our group today? Uh, do, what you, to me, like when you asked me the question, like, when do I think it started or who showed me that first? Like, I realized like uh, that my scoutmaster, like I realized like he, oh my gosh, I get emotional thinking about this. I realized like, I really just wanted to emulate what he did. And when I think about this, like, my leadership really stems from his like he was just like guys i want you all to be eagle scouts or whatever it is but whatever it is you're going to learn i just want you to get the most out of this let's do it what do you you know so when you said that my aha was oh my gosh like i gotta i'm kind of like you know, like i could call my scout master and tell him like <laughs> like I, I really have emulate tried to emulate what he did i yeah. didn't i never made that connection yeah and i think it's uh for for me personally too it's uh, I can make I can make a list of all these influential leaders, and in my mind, looking back now, none of them were a perfect leader, but they all had parts of perfection to their leadership. And the leader I am today is bits and pieces of all of them. And, and what I aspire to as a leader today is I'm hoping I I will never be a perfect leader for anybody, but I'm hoping as I help people grow their own leadership, I hope to be a piece of the leader they're becoming. Um, and I think that's all we can hope for. None of us will ever be that, that perfect leader or expect that perfect leader within us with, in our own worlds to show up. Um, but that's, I think we need to be looking for that little piece of our ideal future self and everybody we come in contact with. Yeah. Yeah. I, and you have me to realize that, you know, that, I don't know, like I was given that opportunity to be in his troop. And I realized like, Man, if I was in someone else's troop, someone else's lead, I, I, I really don't know if I would have, I, I don't have another example that young where someone was so concerned about getting everybody there. Yeah. Does that make sense? So yeah. I just realized, oh my gosh, like if it wasn't for Ray Brewer, I, I wouldn't be the leader who I really am because that was, he was so, he taught me that. I'm like, oh my gosh, I barely made that. You know me like, yeah. wow, so glad I did scouts. Who would have thought? If it wasn't for <laughs> Scoutmaster Brewer, you'd still be using an yeah. house. Yeah, that's yeah. right. That's right. All right, Enchilada Nation, thank you for joining us in this conversation. Stay tuned as we're going to stay focused on leadership over the next couple of weeks. Louie, I'd love to have you back to have a deeper conversation. And as I made that comment of, of people in my world uh, taking pieces of them to help me become a better person and a better leader within my own world, I want to thank you for being another leader that I associate with on a regular basis. And I've learned a lot from you. So thank you for being part of my world. Thanks, Marcus. Uh, listeners, go uh, make sure to follow us, subscribe, uh, like, and comment uh, what we're doing on social media. Uh, go to enchiladanation.com uh, to subscribe and become part of our network. And don't forget, go live life on your terms. Thanks so much.